Samantha, how about you? Do you feel that your righteous room was a sleepy hotel room? <laughs> I would compare it more to a, um, a highly dysfunctional Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> um, in the sense that there's so many different personalities and so much energy, and if it works right, you all just love each other to death. Your quirks and everything, and you uh, really appreciate each other's ideas. And I think that's what makes being in a writer's room the best job there is, I have to say. Um, in some writers' rooms, if I could just say, I think I've gotten closer to people um, in those rooms than my own family in terms of the depth of things I share because you want to have your characters be emotionally honest. And in order to do that, you have to be emotionally honest. And a lot of times, the most creative ideas come from those places of being really vulnerable. So, How about Jesse, Sylvia? Are you all pretending to be tweeners? <laughs> I was on Jesse the first season. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I was hired because I was one of the few uh, writers who had the kids. So I was able to talk about um, the kids' perspective. I think when the comedy room was different, the difference between a comedy room and I think a drama room is it's more like a boys' club. Some of the jokes that go down and some of the stuff that's said um, is a little. You don't want to repeat, um, but then you, the funny thing about that is someone will say a joke, and then you say, how can we clean it up for this? <laughs> and so that's how, that's how it is. Basically, a lot of us just sitting around, or what do we want Jesse to do this, you know, this week? Um, and the showrunners kind of guiding us through, and we pull a lot from what's really happening in our lives. I, when I worked on Moesha, I pulled a lot from what happened in my nephews and nieces life and um, they hated me. <laughs> what is that? What is that? So, um, but if you pull from real life, it's so you can sell your idea. Because you can go, this happened to me once, this happened to my niece, and all of a sudden people are like, what happened? You know, this really happened. Kind of, Aaron Stone had a little supernatural um, overlay, yes? Um, I would say we had a lot of supernatural <laughs> overlay. Um, I, I tried to inject as much as I could into the show, <laughs> as that's where my sensibilities go. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily describe the writer's room for Aaron Stone as a sleazy hotel room. <laughs> Maybe I'm looking at it as a nostalgia filter, but I always kind of thought of it as more as like a romantic bedroom where I could have had like my first time. Because that, that was my first ever writer's room, you know? And the dynamic for us, you know, is um, we were sort of in a unique situation because we had. Okay, we had two, the two co-executive producers, they were both drama writers, and then we had two writing teams um, who specialized in comedy, and then I was the comic book action adventure sci-fi guy, so we all kind of came together and pooled our strengths to do a show that had certain serious dramatic elements, uh, comedic elements, and a whole ton of action adventure sci-fi extravaganza, and it was, it was, they were very gentle, and <laughs> it was a really good, positive, wonderful experience. That's actually interesting. Jane Espenson, your um, specialty has become sci-fi, but that, you didn't start out that way. You started out writing an episode for Barney Miller? Yeah? No. That's 12 years ago? Oh, I wrote a, a spec episode of MASH. Oh, MASH. That's right. Well, that was just, never sent it anywhere. It was just back in like, the typewriter. The actual, because I'm that old, it's a typewriter. Um, but yeah, I wanted to write for comedy, and I, I ended up uh, pitching at Star Trek Next Generation because that's the only place in town you could pitch without an agent, although I was a huge fan. But I really thought I was destined for comedy. Got in the Disney Writers Fellowship in 1992 in the third year of the Disney program. And it was amazing. Now, all you people, if you don't know about the Disney program, like go out and apply to it because it's a great open door in Hollywood. And um, they placed me on, you only could get in with a half hour comedy script because comedy was the only thing going on. And they placed me on Disney comedy, so I worked on Dinosaurs and then Monty, which was a Henry Winkler uh, sitcom. And I spent five seasons in comedy. Uh, transitioned to Buffy because I like that. I like the feeling of a drama room better. You're not up there. You're not three in the morning all writing a script together, which like you do on a comedy. But I still like to come back and visit. So I went back. I spent a season on Jake in Progress, a season on Andy Barker PI, which is one of Andy Richter's sitcoms. And now I co-created Husbands with Brad Bell, so I'm still keeping active in comedy. Um, so I try to do it all, even though everyone will tell you you have to pick one or the other. 
I like to try to try to keep both both plates finished. With showrunners, you've been a showrunner, Jane. Is it necessary for all the writers in the room to specialize in the sci-fi supernatural genre? No, sci-fi and supernatural is more. I think it's more of a setting than a genre. You're still writing about people, um, and they feel all the same emotions, and they go through the same things, and they have <coughs> marriages and kids and, and careers and failures and hopes and dreams. It's all the same stuff. Sci-fi doesn't change any of that. So if a person is writing the characters well, they can write sci-fi. It's just Suddenly, whether or not Battlestar Galactica is a, uh, a battleship on an ocean or a Battlestar in space, he's telling pretty much the same story. Uh, I think it's. I don't think I would want. I, I would want a writer who just writes good people. What about matching the showrunner's voice, uh, Samantha? How important is it um, for a writer to be in a room to be able to do? I think it's really important, but I also. Um, I think that, that is definitely, there's an art to that, because I think they want fresh and original, but you have to know the show, and you have to know the voices, the voices of the characters. I think it's less about the showrunner's voice and more about the voice of the characters that have been created. Now, if the showrunner has done that, then it's one and the same. But um, I think it's really important, but to be able to bring your own sensibilities with that is a plus. Um, that's what makes your favorite episode. You know, that, that that particular writer wrote that show. It's still the characters, it's still the character voices, but there was just something special about that episode that you all really loved. And that's because that writer was able to marry his or her sensibilities with the showrunner. So I think it's, it's a skill that you learn. It's a skill it's that you develop. Definitely would be a skill. How would you go about evoking that, matching the show orders and finding your individual voice? It seems like a dichotomy there, and you're really fluctuating between the two, yeah? Yeah, I think, well, for me personally, I, I come from kind of an odd background. I was a songwriter in Nashville for a little while. And um, writing for TV was actually a really good match because there's a rhythm to it. And there is a specific rhythm to shows, at least the shows that I've worked on, I've found. And if you can hook into that rhythm, that frees you up for your own voice. And uh, I think you just have to find your way in. My way in is, is rhythm. My way in is listening to the characters kind of talk to me. And, and there's an expectation that you have to meet in terms of what the characters are going to say and do. And every once in a while, you got to throw a little one of your own surprises in there. And you just have to find your own way. My, my way is music. I, I listen to the characters, and I listen to the scripts almost like I listen to a song. Do you find that you can't write with music on? Because I can't, because I, cause I drum out the voices of the characters. I can't. Yeah. So, I mean, I say all of that, but I have to have Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think, I, think I, I inferred that because of the way you were talking about it, that like music another set of music right. is going to clash with the set of music that the characters are, are creating by talking in your head. Yeah, uh, yeah I can't have anything on that it drowns out the voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia, what about, um, if you are a unique person in a writer's room, does that make you the go-to person for, say, female issues or Latina issues? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is that good or bad well, in a writer's room? And sometimes, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Jesse, it's about this nanny who takes care of kids from different ethnicities. Um, and a lot of times, the writer, and I was only about being a person of color in the writer's room. So when there's a joke and they go, is this racist? They'll all turn to me. So, <laughs> I approve, you know. <laughs> I don't, it, in that case, it's kind of funny. I, but at the same time, I think they should know if it's racist or not. <laughs> showrunners will hire people they know, which makes sense, and then they say, we have one spot for a diversity writer. Um, a lot of times it's me and my friend, we're all trying to interview for the same job, and unfortunately it's usually a staff writer position, even though, you know, I've ran a show for Nickelodeon, uh, but you would still have to get that staff writer position, you're all fighting for one position. But on the positive side, the networks all want to have a Latino hit. At least they say they do. So I've written six pilots for networks uh, with Latino based uh, pilots. They haven't even gotten picked up. They've gotten paid for them. But um, 
I'm hoping there's going to be new strides this, this year and more Latino showrunners will emerge. Um, so it's a double-edged sword, you know. Being Latina is, is great, um, but at the same time, you know, looking during staffing season, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, it's going to be the same group of writers um, trying to fight for the same uh, low-level positions, unfortunately.